Now, if you guys on this side of the room can't see, you're welcome to fill up some faces over here. Okay, did you want to do that? You good? Okay. All right, so energy. I'm going to do this as a concept map. So I want to ask you guys, give me some, uh, we all know that there is energy in the world. Give me some forms of energy. Yep. Kinetic. Kinetic, okay. What's another form of energy? Yep. Uh, light. light, okay. What else we got? Yep. Heat. Heat, okay. And on, yep. Sound. Sound, okay. What else? Yep. Electrical. Electrical, that's not bad, okay. All right, now I want to sort of do some cross-connection here because we could talk about uh, radiation. And we know that radiation, maybe maybe you could talk about there be ra being radiant heat energy. You could also talk about there being uh, light energy as a form of radiation. I mean, there's some cross-connection between some of these ideas. Um, vibration, uh, sound, sorry, you could talk also about vibrations because although we're not in the sound unit yet, Something that probably wouldn't surprise you is that sound has to do with vibrations. I mean, you can hold your hand against your throat and, and hum and go, ah. you can feel the vibrations. You know that there's some sound energy there, right? What's another form of energy? Come on. Yeah? Mechanical? Mechanical? Okay. I'm going to write it over here. Actually, I'm going to, I like mechanical. That's a nice one. But kinetic is a subset of mechanical. Anybody ever heard of gravitational potential energy? Um, put your hand up if you've heard of it before. Oh my gosh, not a lot of people. You know, I'm going to write it down. I want to talk briefly about what it is. We'll come back to it another day. Uh, it's obviously a two-part term, gravitational and potential. Now, if you take something up to a high, high height, it has the potential to fall, right? If you take it to a lower height, it also has the potential to fall. But when it falls, which one's going to be faster when it hits the ground? The higher one, yeah, because it has more potential to give up its energy, right? got a greater potential to give up its energy. And it has that potential to give up its energy, energy because of the force due to gravity. So we call it a gravitational potential energy because it has the potential to give up energy. And of course, that potential energy has the potential to be turned into kinetic energy. But they're not the same kind of energy. But you could get one from the other, right? Actually, that's a, that's a good thing to sort of start thinking about. What's another type of energy that we use and transform into other types of energy? Is there types of power plants around here you can think of that might do that sort of thing? Yeah. Um, not necessarily around here, but nuclear? Yeah, nothing. Pickering. Electric, sure. Yeah, we got nuclear. Oops. Nuclear. Sorry for the dot. Nuclear. And, and it's actually, just uh, while speaking of nuclear, what are the types of nuclear reactions that release energy? There's two main types that people talk about. They both start with an F, unfortunately. Yeah. Fission and something else. Fission and fusion, fusion yeah. Oopsie. Oh, did I, oh dang it. I Fission and fusion are all spelling mistakes forgiven. Um, I spelled the fusion wrong. Um, if you have your fission and your fusion reactions, one of them, by the way, breaks down nuclei inside of atoms, and one of them combines small nuclei together to make larger nuclei. Which one is the one that joins small nuclei together? Fusion. It fuses them together, right? I spelled it fusion, but fusion. And fission you know what a fissure is. A fissure is like a divide between things. Like division, fissure, you're splitting things apart. Okay? The one that we tend to use in our power plants, does anybody know which one it is? Fission or fusion? 
It is fission, yeah. Fusion's actually kind of a hard reaction to control, and we're not very good at it. Um, ha happens quite a lot in the sun. Hydrogen gets smacked together into helium. Two hydrogens make a helium. You look at the, the periodic table, you'll see that there's a lot of properties in common between joining two hydrogens together and just looking at a plain old helium on its own. It's because the sun undergoes a lot of nuclear fusion. But these guys are all nice, uh, nice types of energy. The question is, what can you use them for? What are they good for? What can you do with, uh, I don't know, like heat energy? What, what's it good for? Cooking stuff? Sure, why not? What else could you use it for? Yeah. What's that? Yeah, maybe facilitating the faster reaction of chemical reactions? Why not? Yeah. Um, anytime you, you use energy, you, you're you, you use it to do something useful, you're essentially turning it into another form. Okay, so let's try this. What about, actually there's a, there's a type of energy we didn't include here. It was chemical energy. And we might be even more specific. We might talk about biochemical energy. It's just the chemical release of energy within a living organism. What would be a situation where you would release biochemical energy and convert it into kinetic energy? Just describe a story. When would you when would you be releasing biochemical energy and turning it into kinetic energy? What do you say? Um, you had a burger from the after lunch. It digested through your body and then after school you went for a bike ride. Sure, sounds good. You go move yourself around after having some food. You're breaking down those chemicals, those chemical bonds within the burger molecules. You know, we're not being too technical here. Breaking down the chemical bonds, releasing chemical energy, and we'll leave it up to the biology people and the chemistry people to talk about all the mechanisms for that. But in the end, we observe as, as physics people that somebody walks around, right? Maybe goes for a bike ride. So you have a transfer of energy from chemical to kinetic. Now you guys talked about, probably in uh, grade 9 or grade 10, you talked about ecosystems. You talk about energy food chain and the food chains and all that sort of stuff. You eat a burger, you know you're feeding on one part of the ecosystem maybe, maybe cows, maybe that's part of your ecosystem. You take in some of the chemical energy, you use it for other stuff. Does the energy get perfectly transformed? What happens? You get some energy loss, right? So people talk about this idea of energy loss, and they talk about it in terms of percent efficiency. So percent efficiency is the, the idea that maybe I only get to, maybe I, I eat a cow, I eat a hamburger, and maybe only 10% of the energy from the hamburger that I eat actually gets put towards moving me around. So I'd say that, okay, so that's an energy transfer, but it's only 10% efficient. That's reasonable. Okay? People talk about uh, lighting a light bulb. And then they talk, they're talking about having electrical energy. What form of energy is the useful form of energy when you light a light bulb? Light, yeah. Now let's say that you have a, I don't know, maybe it's not that great a light bulb. Let's say that it's got a percent efficiency, oopsie, percent efficiency of 5%. Well, you say, well, that's not so good. 95% energy loss is what that means. Where'd the 95% of the energy go to? Yeah, what do you say? Dispersed um, as heat energy? Yeah, maybe heat. That, that's a, probably one of the biggest culprits, right? Heat energy. Anything else you can think of that might have lost the energy? You talk about, in grade 9 science, talk about uh, the resistance of wires. <coughs> you talk about the resistance of resistors. Oh, if you didn't, I bet you... But I bet you, you did. Maybe you just forget about it. But you know, anytime you try to send electricity through a substance, that substance has, even if it's a little bit, has a tendency to re resist the motion of electrons through it. So it might just be simple electrical resistance that loses the energy within the circuit that leads up to the light bulb. Yeah, it turns into heat. That's where you lose energy. Electrical resistance might be another loss of energy. And there might be a number of other smaller contributors. Probably heat's the biggest one, though. Anyway, the point isn't... isn't uh, at this point, we're not talking about where you're losing all the energy. The point is that you do lose energy. Anytime you try to transfer energy from one form to another, you lo may lose energy from the system. But does the energy get destroyed? No. 
No, I mean, in fact, that's, that's a fairly basic principle. And it's something we're going to come back to. But the idea is that energy can change forms, but it's never created or destroyed. <coughs> and we may return to this later and, and we'll probably call it something like the law of conservation of energy. Well, we won't call it something like that. That's exactly what we'll call it. But we'll deal with it maybe a little bit more mathematically. The idea is that you can't create energy and you can't destroy energy. All you can do is shift it around from place to place and form to form. People say, oh no, that's gibberish. I've gone to a, a power plant in grade nine. We went to the power plant down at Niagara Falls and they were creating energy there. True or false? Do they create energy at Niagara Falls? False. No, they don't create anything at Niagara Falls. False. You don't, ooh, false. You don't create any energy at Niagara Falls. What do you do? Preserve. What's that? Preserve. Well, you might, uh, yeah, you, you put it into a useful form. It wouldn't say preserve. You might transform is a better word, maybe. You transform it from what form to what form? Kinetic. Okay, so we might talk about kinetic. And if you just had a paddle wheel sitting in a river, I might say, yeah, you're right. You go straight from kinetic to electrical. But how do you get the kinetic if you're talking about water going over Niagara Falls? What do you start with first? Starts up. Yes, starts up high. What did you call it? Gravitational potential. Yeah, gravitational potential. So we start with our gravitational potential. And that gravitational potential energy from the water being at the top of the falls turns into kinetic energy by the time it gets closer to the bottom of the falls. And of course, that gravitational potential energy becoming kinetic energy gets the turbine spinning, and that gives you your electrical energy. And then after that, I suppose it's the, the job of the people at the power plant to get the energy to your house. But you get these, this chain of transformance of energy. People say, oh, well, all that energy from the gravitational potential energy got turned into electrical energy. But even this, and this is a pretty sweet system, but even this has inefficiencies. When that water falls, do you think it encounters the air? You got some air drag, right? I mean, we, we, we often neglect air drag, but really, if we're being really good uh, measures of energy, we're going to lose percent efficiency. And when that kinetic energy from the water, smacks into the turbine. Tell me something about the design of even the best turbines. Can you eliminate all the friction? No. no. You got an issue of percent efficiency. Now, in a lot of the stuff in this course, we're going to talk about energy transform being perfect. Just like in earlier units, we talked about there being no air resistance. Is that realistic? No. Is it a nice way to talk about some ideas that might otherwise kind of blow you away if we build in all the other stuff? Yeah, it's a nice way to talk about some ideas, okay? So please don't say, oh, Mr. Killens, this doesn't make any sense. How could this be? I know that's not the way it'd be. It'd be a little bit more complicated than that. And maybe we'll build in some of that complicated stuff. Don't get too upset about it. I know that it's there. You know that it's there. You lose a little energy in the inefficiencies, but we're going to pretend a little bit first, okay? We're going to do a little bit of theoretical calculations. This is a good way to start. All right. I'm just going to pause for a second.